Assalamualaikum. Hi. We continue on the Bioreactor Engineering Part 1. And this is the last top, subtopic for Part 1, which is on the transport processes in the third tank bioreactor or the fermentation. You can refer to the textbook written by Schuller and Cargi, Bioprocess Engineering Basic Concept, 2nd edition, Prentice Hall, and you can read in chapter 6 and 10. Let's start on the transport processes in the third tank bioreactor. Okay, for the transport processes in the third tank bioreactor, we need to know on the agitation and aeration because of these two parameters, the agitation and aeration, it involves in the transport of process in the third tank bioreactor, mainly for the aerobic fermentation, especially okay, for the aerobic fermentation. This diagram, it shows a typical gas-liquid mass transfer for microorganism. So we know that the cell need, requires carbon sources and they require nitrogen sources as well as the phosphor phosphorus sources. Okay, later, okay, it will produce carbon dioxide and also H2O. And cell also might require O2 and the trace elements such as vitamins and also sulfur sources. Okay. A fermentation media may consist of all these elements okay, in order for the cell to grow. Right. Oxygen demand and oxygen mass transfer is being introduced through the aeration and agitation. The oxygen has apparently small solubility in aqueous solution in distilled water at atmospheric pressure and ambient temperature. So the, sol the solubility of oxygen is only around 7 to 8 ppm. As we consider larger scales of distance from molecular to cellular, the fluid volumes containing millions of cells per mil, the sources and things of entities such as nutrients, cells and products become further separated in space and transport phenomena rather than chemical or biochemical rate will influence or even dominate the overall rate of solution processing in the in the bioreaction volume. So this situation it is known as uh, to increase the gas liquid mass transfer of oxygen. The schematic diagram shows here how the transportation between the gas into the cell. Okay, so this is a gas liquid mass transfer in cellular system. Oxygen they must pass through a series of transport resistance. It starts with the first step. Okay, you can refer to the diagram here. The diffusion from bulk gas to the gas liquid interface. And then it moves to the second step, the movement through the gas liquid interface. Okay, then the diffusion of the solute through the relatively unmixed liquid region adjacent to the bubble into the well mixed liquid, well mixed bulk liquid. Then later, transport of a solute through the bulk liquid to a second relatively unmixed liquid region surrounding the cell. And then it moves in this bulk liquid okay, to transport through the second unmixed liquid region associated with the cell. Okay. And then it diffuses okay, diffuses transport into the cellular flock or mycelia or soil particle of the cell. And later it will transport across cell envelope and to intracellular reaction site. Okay, into the cell. The basic mass transfer concept. An actively respiring yeast population may have an oxygen consumption rate of the order of 
0.3 gram of oxygen per hour per gram of dry weight of cell mass. The peak oxygen consumption for a population density of 10 power of 9 cells per mil is estimated by assuming the cells to have volumes of 10 power of negative 10 mil of which 80% is water. Therefore, the absolute demand, okay, absolute oxygen demand, it becomes as the equation shows here. Okay, the solution shows here. So, this is the typical oxygen consumption for an active yield population. It's an example. Okay. But the solubility of oxygen in aqueous solution at atmospheric pressure and ambient temperature is only around 8 ppm, wherein 1 liter of medium of mass 1000 gram, the solubility is of oxygen is only 0 0.008 gram, okay, which is small. So, the absolute oxygen demand of peak oxygen consumption of 6 gram oxygen Okay, per liter hour is 750 times of oxygen saturation value per hour. Since the stock of dissolved oxygen is relatively small, it must be continuously added to the liquid in order to maintain a viable cell population. Okay. This continuously added can be done through parger, okay, which is the aeration. Right. Further, since the solubility of oxygen is low, the concentration difference driving the mass transfer is also very small. Let's look on the oxygen uptake in cell culture. The factors affecting cellular oxygen demand, okay, it can be from the cell species itself, the culture growth phase, and the nature of the carbon sources provided in the medium okay, or the broth. So the batch culture, okay, the rate of oxygen varies within time okay, in the batch culture. Due to the concentration of cells might increase, it will be increasing as the total rate of oxygen uptake proportional to the number of cells present during the fermentation. And the rate of oxygen consumption per cell the specific oxygen uptake rate, QO, okay, is maximum at early stage of the cell growth. Okay, defined by the equation of QO2 equals to QO2X. Right? Where Q, capital O2, is the oxygen uptake rate per volume, gram mole li per liter second. And QO2, Q, small Q, is the specific oxygen uptake rate. And X is the cell concentration. So we know that many factors might influence the oxygen demand. Okay? And the most important are the cell species, the culture, growth phase and the nature of the carbon sources that being introduced in the medium. Table 10.1 shows the typical oxygen uptake rate in different cell culture okay? based on different microbiome listed here. Right. QO2 is dependent on the oxygen concentration in the liquid, which is denoted by Cl liquid O2. Okay, the, the concentration of O2 in the liquid. If CO2L is above critical oxygen concentration, C critical, okay, QO2 is a constant maximum and independent of CO2L. If CO2L is below C critical, then QO2 is approximately linear dependent on oxygen concentration, CO2L. The dissolved oxygen concentration at every point in the fermenter must be above C critical. That's why we need to know the C critical for each of the species and the fermentation. Okay. As the previous uh, lecture has been mentioned, the C critical, it must be uh, between 10% uh, to 20%, 5, 10, 20, 
okay in that range okay uh, normally um it's 10 percent okay so critical depends on the organism usually between five percent and ten percent of the air saturation and mostly uh, taken is ten percent